I recently made a video about 10 physics myths and a lot of you asked that I do another one about quantum myths in particular. So here we go, starting with 10. Quantum physics means discreteness. Electrons sit in shells around atomic nuclei with gaps between them. The energies of those electrons are discrete, they come in steps. There are other cases where quantum effects lead to discreteness. For example, the photoelectric effect, which demonstrates that light is made of packets of energy, quanta, called photons. However, quantum effects don't make everything discrete. The position of an electron that isn't bound to a nucleus but is, for example, moving through a wire is continuous. And while you can interpret light as made up of those quanta, the photons, they can take on any energy. So basically, some things become discrete, others don't. 9. Quantum physics proves that parallel universes exist. I personally blame David Deutsch for this confusion. You see, David Deutsch has used a particular interpretation for how a quantum computer works, according to which a quantum computer gets its special power by parallel computing in multiple universes. It's almost a century since the theory was proposed, and half that time it has been known that it describes a multiverse. And yet that proposition is still um, disputed by most physicists. And it's not like this is wrong. It's just that it's a physically meaningless statement. You can as well interpret the maths as taking place in just this one universe. Then there is the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics, which is actually about something different, namely that a measurement doesn't collapse the wave function but that each possible outcome happens in a separate universe. Again, this is just a weird interpretation of maths. Operationally, the many worlds interpretation works exactly the same way as the more standard interpretation with the collapse. That parallel universes exist is what I call an ascientific idea. It's not wrong, but it's not supported by any evidence either. Eight. Quantum physics means that nature is fundamentally random. The mathematics of quantum physics has a random element that's entirely unpredictable. Does this mean that nature itself is fundamentally unpredictable? We'll never know. It's a question that's impossible to answer by scientific test. You can never rule out that there's a way to calculate what seems unpredictable. So you should be wary of people who say otherwise. They make an impossible claim, which isn't good. 7. Einstein was wrong about quantum physics. I don't know why people keep claiming that Einstein used the phrase spooky action at a distance to refer to entanglement. I read the letter in which the phrase appeared. It's not about entanglement. Einstein was almost certainly referring to the collapse of the wave function, which he had earlier referred to as a peculiar action at a distance. Entangled particles are correlated. There is no action between them. If you do anything to one of a pair of entangled particles, that'll not do anything to the other particle. It doesn't even make sense to refer to it as an action, spooky or not. Entanglement has been proved to be real. If you mistakenly think that Einstein referred to entanglement, you'd conclude that Einstein was wrong. But it's not what he meant. There is no evidence that the collapse of the wave function, that is Einstein's spooky action, is actually real. So no, Einstein was not proved wrong on this. That said, Einstein was wrong about some things he said along the line about quantum physics. But on this particular point, the jury is still out, maybe in more than one place at once. 6. 
quantum entanglement is faster than light. This misunderstanding is closely related to the previous one. If you know that entanglement has been proved to be real and you mistakenly think that entanglement is a spooky action at a distance, then you erroneously come to believe that you can use entangled particles to instantaneously affect another particle elsewhere. Because hey, it's an action, right? But no, it isn't. Quantum physics does not allow you to send information faster than light. There's literally a theorem which proves it. There is no action in entanglement. It's a correlation. 5. We can't quantize gravity. This isn't so much a myth as a misunderstanding. We can quantize gravity. It's been done already in the 1960s. It's just that this theory breaks down at super high energies. This isn't per se a problem because it might just mean that the theory is incomplete, like Einstein argued that quantum physics is incomplete. However, if you think that the next theory in physics will be a final theory, one that completely describes everything, then it's a problem that quantum gravity breaks down at high energies. It's this belief that we're close to a final theory of everything that's led to a lot of failed approaches to quantize gravity, like loops and strings and causal dynamical triangulations and so on. 4. Superpositions are strange. Saying that a quantum state is in a superposition doesn't mean anything. A superposition is a sum. That's it. And unless I tell you a sum of what it is, anything can be a superposition. I am a superposition. I'm half a Sabina plus half a Sabina. More seriously, you can think of a wave function as a vector of length 1 pointing some direction. That's a direction in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space over the complex numbers, but let's leave aside the subtleties. It's a vector. You can always write this vector as a sum of two other vectors. So any wave function is a superposition of something. What physicists often mean when they talk about a superposition is a superposition of two places. A sum of a particle in one place plus another. This just isn't anything that we encounter in daily life, so we have no good words to describe it. This is why we often say the particle is in two places at once. But this is really just words for a mathematical property that defies explanation. So superpositions per se are not strange. What's strange is superpositions that have no interpretation in our classical world. This leads me directly to what's the most technical point on my list. Three, superpositions are the same as entanglement. An entangled state is one in which at least two systems share some property, so the two systems are correlated. An entangled state is always a superposition, but not every superposition is also an entangled state. While it doesn't make sense to say this state is a superposition because every state is a superposition of something, it does make sense to say this state is entangled. The short summary is, if you want to sound smart, talk about entangled states, not superpositions. If you want to sound really smart, ask about the Schmidt decomposition and then excuse yourself to the bathroom. 2. Quantum physics is a theory for the microscopic range. Quantum physics is a theory that applies to everything. It's just that in most cases you can't observe the effects. However, quantum entanglement has been measured between photons as far as 100 kilometers apart, or Bose-Einstein condensates in which particles take on one common quantum state that can contain millions of atoms. There are even theories in which dark matter has quantum properties that literally stretch throughout entire galaxies. Loosely speaking, the bigger and the warmer an object is, the more difficult it is to observe its quantum properties. But strictly speaking, the quantum properties never go away. And this brings me to 1. 
Consciousness influences the outcome of quantum processes. In the early days of quantum mechanics, physicists struggled a lot with the notion of a measurement that appears in the mathematics of the theory. This is because the maths leaves it unclear just exactly what a measurement is. One of the ideas they had was that a measurement has something to do with the person who made the measurement. This is how quantum mechanics became linked to consciousness. The idea was pursued for a while, for example, by John Wheeler. However, I don't know anyone who still believes that consciousness has anything to do with the outcomes of measurements. While we still have no good definition for what a measurement is, that's the measurement problem, Physicists today mostly agree that it just requires a device that amplifies the quantum behavior to macroscopic scales. Yes, there is some controversy around what exactly macroscopic means, but one doesn't need a conscious being for a measurement. The myth that consciousness plays a role for quantum physics persists especially in the quantum healing corners where quarks want you to believe that thinking the right way can affect the probabilities of quantum events. It doesn't. Yes, there have actually been experiments testing whether looking at a double slit changes the outcome didn't work. A shame, really, because if it worked, we could all win the lottery just by looking at the draw. That said, this doesn't mean that quantum effects play no role in the human brain. That's a different question. Most physicists think it's unlikely because quantum effects are ridiculously fragile. That's why they cool quantum computers down to some millikelvin. But it's not been entirely ruled out. So consciousness doesn't affect quantum physics. Quantum physics might be required for consciousness, but that currently seems implausible. So that was my list. Did I forget anything? Let me know in the comments. If this video inspired you to learn more about quantum physics, mathematics or science in general, the best place to get started is on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build up your knowledge and train your problem-solving skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. Sounds good? I hope it does. Better still, you can try it out for free. Just use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That'll get you 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.